speak to you in the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Just before I uh, uh, begin my sermon, I just want to take a moment to thank you all. I've, I've seen enough comings and goings to know that you're up to some mischief later on. But I do want to just thank you all so much for welcoming Paul and me into this community, for Father Ben risking having me here at the front. And uh, it has been a real joy for us. When we came, we were not expecting to be moving quite so quickly, but um, life turns around sometimes. So you will probably see us here, but uh, at least for now, uh, this will probably be my last sermon for a while. Advent 4. Her name is Helen Bohain. She is a gospel singer from Eritrea. She is slight and softly spoken. Her crime was making a CD singing of her love for God. And when she refused to sign a document pledging to end all participation in evangelistic activities, she was thrown into jail. More specifically, she told those of us at the conference, she was thrown into a dirty shipping container in the desert. With only a small window, this was, she said, hell on earth. Very cold at night, very hot in the day. No provision for cleaning oneself, watery food that made the woman sick. Her captors demanded that she deny her faith, but she'd been brought up in the church. She could not deny her Lord. She prayed three times a day and three times a night. She was not allowed a Bible, but the word of God was within. And that is what sustained her and gave her the words of the song in those darkest of times. When she was released 32 months later after a prolonged international campaign, she was too weak to walk, but she carried the song with her and she sang it for us. We didn't understand the words, we did not need to. We heard it each in our own language the rise and fall of her voice, a song of love and thanksgiving for her savior, of praise and of hope despite her circumstances. Her name is Mary. She is a teenager. She's not in prison, but she lives under Caesar's sword, the oppressive rule of the Roman authorities. When the angel came to her, she said yes, Though surely she must have wondered what this would mean for her and how to explain it to her family, to her neighbors, to Joseph. When she heard of her, husband, of her cousin's unexpected and long desired pregnancy, she went to her. Was it then, at that meeting, that her hope, her trust was confirmed? For when Elizabeth heard Mary's greeting, her own child leapt in her womb. And Elizabeth, filled with the Holy Spirit, cried out, Blessed are you among women. Why has this happened to me? The mother of my Lord comes to me. They heard and recognized a language from deep within. John, later to be called John the Baptist, as yet an unborn child, knew and leapt for joy. And his mother cried out her joyous words of blessing. Blessed is she who believed that there would be a fulfillment of what was spoken to her by the Lord. And Mary, Mary's heart leapt, leapt perhaps into song, a song of love, of praise, of hope, of the promise of freedom. A song of the ancients. Words came to her from the Torah, from the Psalm of David, from Hannah's song of joy for her child. Mary sang out her praises to God. God had not forgotten, not forgotten his promises to Abraham from generation to generation and to his descendants forever. The proud will be scattered, the powerful brought down their throne, from their thrones and the lowly lifted up the hungry filled with good things, and the rich sent away empty. Mary sang her spontaneous and joyous song. 
I wonder if you have ever felt so full of joy that you have burst into song. Good news, a sick one is well. A problem is solved, a weight is lifted, and the joy-filled words spontaneously come from within. Perhaps with clapping, or even dancing. Well, maybe not the dancing. But when I thought of this joyous abandonment, a scene came to mind, and I hope you won't mind me sharing it. It is probably my last sermon, and if it wasn't, it will be now. <laughs> and I am in no way comparing this to Mary's song. Only the image of an unexpected and spontaneous moment of pure joy. If you have ever seen the children's movie, Babe, a farmer and a little talking pig. I know it doesn't have a lot to do with Mary, but you may remember that scene, that wonderful scene where a rather austere farmer of little words suddenly bursts into a song of love and joy and dances around the room. It makes me cry every time I see it. It's just a beautiful image of a sudden, uh, spontaneous bursting of dancing and love. It's one that makes me smile. Mary's song of joy, of praise, of thanksgiving, of hope for Israel, the song we know as the Magnificat, has been part of the communal prayer of the church from at least the 8th century, whispered in monasteries, chanted in cathedrals, recited in small remote churches by evening candlelight, and sung later today in our own church. These words of a Middle Eastern teenager have inspired settings by Vivaldi, Bach, and Mozart. Not sure what setting Jesse's going to be using. God had moved and a child is born. And what will be the outcome? For the moment Mary is spared the knowledge that her heart will be pierced with a sword and that the cry of her precious newborn will be all but drowned out by the women wailing when their babies are slaughtered by the Roman soldiers. But for now, this young mother-to-be sings, and her voice is carried through the centuries, prophetic words from the Jewish nation. And for Helen, the young Eritrean woman imprisoned for sharing her faith. Helen spoke at a conference that Paul and I attended in Rome last week. The conference was titled, Under Caesar's Sword, and later, Paul and I were walking around the ruins of the Colosseum, a place of death for so many Christians, visibly being able to see the way that the empire had been brought down. And there, if you've been there, you know there's a cross that stands there. But we were reminded at the conference that the slaughter continues throughout the world for Christians and for other religions. Helen walks free now, she's living in Denmark, because others brought her plight to the attention of the world. But something I've noticed when we go to these conferences, often the Christians from the Middle East will wonder if they have been forgotten by their sisters and brothers in the West, by us. Rabbi David Sabastin is the US ambassador at large for international religious freedom, and he told us, I am Jewish. I know what happens when good people remain silent. In this season of Advent, as we anticipate the birth of our Savior, let us not remain silent. We have been entrusted with this story, with the story of a people, our people, for whom we have been grafted in. It is a story of hope even in the very darkest times, when our world seems to have turned upside down. It is not an idealistic hope, but a sure and certain hope. And let us not be caught up in the trap of so-called political correctness, so that we dare not take the name of Jesus on our lips or bend the knee at the mention of his name. I am not advocating forcing it down people's throats, but simply, we are Christians. We carry the name of Christ. This is not the holiday season. It is Christmas, the celebration of the most extraordinary, life-changing event on earth. We don't all have to agree. 
but we celebrate. For God so loved the world that he came to it, carried by a young woman, birthed in a humble shelter, to fulfill the promise made to Abraham and all his descendants, to you and to me. Let us not stay silent. Let us speak out for those who are suffering for their faith. Let us speak out when our faith is derided and sidelined. Let us tell the story to our children and grandchildren with carols and pageants and nativity scenes, with children wearing tea towels on their head and lopsided halos, with chaos, with joy, with Christmas cards and Christmas celebrations. For light came into the darkness, and the darkness cannot silence the words of praise, of hope, and of thanksgiving. For unto us a child is born, Emmanuel, God with us. And his mother sang a song that echoes through the ages for Mary, for Elizabeth, for Helen, for our sisters and brothers throughout the world, for you and for me, for our children and our grandchildren, according to the promise that God made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Amen. <laughs>